Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Sana channel, my name is Shanks and today we're gonna cast a replay for Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 1.03 on the beautiful map Anoria in between good and evil L classical matchup Gondor Rohan against Mordor Isengard. Before further ado, let's get it started. It's been a really long time since the last video for Battle for Middle Earth 1 and I'm so excited because this matchup I like it so much. We are on the beautiful map Anorian, the most played 2v2 map in Battle for Middle Earth 1 by far. And at the bottom left side we have the Grey Isengard player Kebab. His ally at the top left side is the blue Mordor player Nazarova. Their opponent at the top right side is the orange Gondor player Dexter. And Dexter's ally at the bottom right side is the red Rohan player Ganjaman. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is a El Clasico matchup. Good versus evil, just like in the films. You love to see it. Please make sure to leave a like on this video if you do want to see more BFME 1 content in the future. And let me also know in the comment section down below what is your most favorite faction ever in Battle for Middle Earth 1. Two farms coming up for the Rohan Flare. He's gonna use the Meria Dog Brandy Bog to capture those farms outside. And his peasants are leading forward. But they will be caught by nobody else than the mighty Urukai. And you know what Gimli is saying? This is no rubble of mindless orcs. These are Urukai. Their armor is thick and their shields broad, but not only that, they are also the fastest and the strongest swordsman by far in Battle for Middle Earth 1. And in this matchup, as Kondo and Rohan, your goal is to deal economical damage to Mordor and Isengard. Why? Because if you don't do that, they will be outskilling you hardcore. Mordor Isengard, they will be extremely strong, they will have a lot of leadership and it's gonna be almost impossible for you to actually face them. That's why it's so important. I will be used for damage boost in order to take down those soldiers a bit faster. And I believe Isengard will be able to defend himself, since once again Urukai are unmatched. He was also starting with a furnace and the Uruk pit inside his base, which kind of makes sense because Rohan might potentially get some more and more peasants on the field. You see that guys? He's using his Lamarine workers to repair this mill. This way the mill is gonna be able to tank a little bit longer, and that's gonna give you the time you need in order to defend this Lamarine mill, which again is going to be the main priority for the evil part to keep those mills protected. In the meantime, peasants are fighting against Urukai. They know running away is not an option because Urukai are not only the strongest but also the fastest swordsman in the game Battle for Middle Earth 1. Also, Hobbit is gonna join the party. We have third farm coming up now for the Rohan player at the bottom right side. Gondo is building blacksmith and two farms. He's now saving for the stable, which will cost you 800. And I'm assuming Gondor is going to be the player who, is, who will be recruiting some uh, Gondor Knights and Rohan might potentially go for a middle camp or get Eomi on the field and later on make the transition into the Rohirrim Archers to support the Gondor when he's trying to rush the evil base. And the host of this game is also the Rohan player Ganjaman and host advantage in Battle for Middle Earth games generally means quite a lot because legs are gonna not happen for the, for the host player. He will have no delay. When he's moving, the units are gonna move, but the off horse players, they will have some trouble. Which is of course the biggest weakness of Battle for Middle Earth games. Hobbits are doing a phenomenal job. Looks like Kebab is trying to war chant here on the orcs and on its Urukai. And also Gollum is luring away. That's a very interesting and smart move from the evil part. Evil factions, Mordor and Isengard. Very well done. And the creep is gonna be secured by Mordor and the money, 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 money is also able to get the money. What a phenomenal start into the game. More peasants are coming, it's a pretty delayed peasant push. So with this push, he might actually be able to destroy at least one mil, if not more than that. Isengard was able to get some more money, has now three furnaces inside the base. Mordor base is looking amazing. He was getting so much money, he was untouched. He will be using the Tainted Land in front of his own base. Tainted Land is able to give you not only 40% armor, but also nullify enemy leadership bonuses the second they step on it. So very important. The Vorks, he was even able to lure the Vorks to the lair, but I believe Meriadoc, uh, Peregrine Took, will be able to keep this you know, farm from his ally protected. The first battalion of Gondor Knight is a little bit too late, but it's, uh, no, it's gonna be too late. The farm is gonna be taken down, right? Yeah, the farm is going down unfortunately for Gondor. And that's kinda bad, because the farms are gonna hit level 3, that means more money. But this is not going to be the case around this side. And remember the farms outside are always starting with level 2. While the farms inside are starting with rank 1. So rank, the outside farms are giving you for that reason also more money. 
Berserker now to deal with the peasant. Rohan player Ganjaman was indeed able to destroy the settlement, but it's not the end of the world. Mordo is in a really good spot. I would just recommend him to, bu to build some more towers, just, you know, to feel a bit more safe. But I believe he's in a really great spot. And the first mountain troll is going to be joining the battlefield sooner than the Gondor Rohan team were expecting. And we have also Rohirrim archers, question mark? No, yeah, Rohirrim archers indeed. Rohirrim archers are very nice. But their damage output against buildings is kind of limited. That means he will need the assistance of his ally to kill this mill a bit faster. And Lamry mills, guys, are giving you the wood monos, which means if you have three Lamry mills, you will have 20% cost reduction in your buildings. And those furnaces, which normally cost 350, will only cost 280. With that being said, Isengard will be able to fill up his base a little bit faster. Pressure, pressure, pressure. And once again, that's the key to victory. In order to win against evil factions, you need to cut their resource income as much as you possibly can. But this is gonna be harder than you might think because sooner or later this Mordor will have mountain trolls on the field and Gondor will struggle. That's why he will need the assistance of his ally with his Rohirrim archers. But without leadership Rohirrim archers are not the strongest. That's why he will need definitely Theodin on the field as soon as possible to make those Rohirrim archers hit 50% harder and also his Gondor knights 50% tankier. We have now two Gondor Knights on the field. Now is the time for the Gondor player to fill up the base. Eventually, later on, we're also gonna see heroes like Gandalf the White, of course. And uh, mid game should be in favor of the Gondor Rohan team because they have the mobility advantage. They can always hit and run, hit and run, try to buy as much time as possible for the Gondor player to build the workshop and to get some trebuchets on the field, which are needed in order to deal with the enemy combos with this much massive leadership. Great creeping here from the Gondor player. He was luring the troll away with one of the Gondor knights, and the second one was focusing down the lair. But unfortunately, now the cave troll is gonna take down this farm, but it's fine. It's fine, it's fine. This mill is actually remaining on the field now for a quite long time. And he was able to build the armory with this discount of three Lamry mills outside. Pikeman on the field is a counter unit to the Gondor knights, of course. But once again, that's why Rohan Gondor is a strong combination because the Rohirrim archers are great against not only trolls but also pikemen. And once they have the fire arrow upgrade purchased, they're gonna kill those pikemen in no time, even without leadership. Fire is a huge damage boost in battle for middle of one. This mill is gonna be eventually taken down, but Rohan player was actually playing for a really long time without any farms outside. That's a really great play from Mordor Isengard team, you know, keep pressuring all the time, draw the attention from the Gondor Rohan team and this way they will be remaining untouched. Two more trolls needed for the troll cage to hit level 2. That's going to give you the chance to recruit the best sportive unit in the game. These are drummer trolls guys. For the party in Middle, Middle Earth that's their responsibility. Dexter is pinging those pikemen in the middle of the map but that's nice for Gondor Rohan team because Rohan now will get some more power points and experience points on his Rohirrim archers. But once again if I personally like to recruit Eomea, because Eomea, once he's level 4, will have leadership for the nearby Gondor Knights and Rohirrim Archers, and that's a very significant damage boost to kill those pikemen a bit faster. You see how long, how long it takes actually for them to kill them? But I like this positioning from the Rohirrim Archers. When one of them is gonna get focused down, he can always disengage, and that's the power of the mobility, because you have the chance to hit, kite, hit, kite, hit, kite. Okay. You have the trolls on the field, and Mordo, I mean, he's sacrificing one of the pikemen, but that's fine. He's drawing attention, he's making them stop, and uh, just because they can't ignore this pikemen, that's not possible. And during all this time, Mordor Isengard are untouched. And later on, we won't not only have the drama troll, keep in mind that Isengard has the war chan for 50% more damage and 50% more armor, and Mordor has the Eye of Sauron for 50% more damage and 200% more combat experience. But that's not it. 100% combat experience, sorry, not 200. That's a drama troll. Mordor can always get the Witch King. Isengard can always get Lurt. Just put him close to the combos. He will be leveling up to level 5 in no time. That means also 60% more damage from Lurt. Then you have Darkness. And on top of that, you have also Freezing Rain, which can nullify all the leadership bonuses from the enemy team. So not only you will be extremely strong, but also enemy units are gonna lose all their bonuses which they might later on get from Gandalf or Theodin for example. Oh, he's running it down. 
but pikes were not able to get into the porcupine formation fast enough. If you don't switch into the porcupine formation, the horses, they will deal incredible, <laughs> incredible amount of damage to you, and they won't take any damage in return. Demolish is demolishing. Very important to demol demolish around 50% health mark from the buildings. This way you can deny your opening the experience and power points he's looking for. And of course, lots of pressure. That's a very bad mistake from Mordo to actually recruit those Orc combo battalion. It's a waste of money in my opinion. They are just not strong enough. They are not bringing too much to the table. And uh, Mordo has to be careful with the straws to not lose them against the Rohirrim Arches. It's also very important. He needs Banner. Uh, he has already purchased the Heavy Armor and the Forge... No, Heavy Armor and the Fire Arrow. You don't really need Forge Blades in this matchup. Oh, he is coming in now. But he's gonna take so much damage, he has to use heal in, in order to save those Condonites. Luckily for him, these combos have no fire just yet. If they would have fire, these Condonites would never be able to survive. He will also be able to save this one. That's gonna be quite tough. Only one unit remaining from the battalion. He is getting into the corner. He's gonna prison himself. I don't see him getting alive from this situation. We will see about that. Actually... Uh, there are no towers. Oh my goodness. He will be able... And guys, trust me. Like, saving those Condonites is very important because they are extremely expensive. They're gonna cost 800 for each battalion. And then we, you need to also add all the costs you need to invest for the upgrades. And also, look at the fire now. And look at the sniping on the Rohirrim... Uh, on the trolls, you know, with the Rohirrim archers. That's why fire is such a huge damage boost. Um, Night Shield is a very significant upgrade from the Gondonites because that's gonna make your uh, Gondonites extremely tanky, increasing your durability extremely against archers. And that's pretty much like the towers, everything, every arrow pretty much which shoots you down will be dealing quite less damage, which is very needed in this matchup against combos and when you wanna rush the base against the towers. It's a mistake sending those units like that. He has barely any archers remaining on the field. One drama troll, but he needs trolls to break the wall. And he has only one troll left. Remember those Rohirrim archers were able to kill all the other trolls. And with that they are able to buy enough time. Because this one troll will need ages to destroy one part of the wall. Which is needed for the Isengard player to enter the base. Theodin is coming up. Statue is coming up as well. Statue is a huge leadership boost for the nearby allied units. That's gonna make you deal 100% more damage with Theorem being around and giving you leadership with level 1 that adds up with each other. Remember in battle for middle of 1 leadership is able to stack with each other. That means the Rohirrim March and Gondor Knights are gonna deal 150% more damage. They will become 50% tankier and also level up twice as fast. Be that's not... This is no Orkhorn <laughs> as Legolas would like to say. The Alps are coming in clutch to save Rohan just like in the film Helm's Deep. Lord of the Rings in the Two Towers. Don't run into the pikeman like that. He's taking so much damage. This Isengard is army. This Isengard army is badly damaged, you know. So, but Dramatroll has to stay closer. And once again, the real thing is the 200 person combat experience. One part of the wall has been indeed broken, but I believe going inside the jeans yet is not the smartest idea in the world because these combos are badly damaged. And Warchan was already used. That means the Warchan is gonna be gone very soon and they will have only drama troll leadership with potentially later on the, uh, later on the Eye of Sauron but also Rohan Kondo team they will have more units around this area and they have also great amount of leadership as long as Theoden is remaining and the tricky part is if you don't pay attention Theoden can also get level 4 in a blinking of an eye you know and then boom he will have glorious charge for death and glory ladies and gentlemen and the Gondon eyes they will become almost invincible he's building all the time to back the enemy units a little bit, I guess. And that's what I'm trying to say. You see, he has only one single drama troll. And all Rohan player has to do is kill this drama troll. No more leadership, no more problem. The outnumber advantage. He has no trolls to go inside. He has not enough combos to fight this. And Warchan is on cooldown. Everything is looking great in the favor of Gondor Rohan team. And I believe they should be able to defend themselves. The only good thing about this situation for the Mora Isengard team is the, D is the fact that uh, he was able to, you know, they were able to buy some time for themselves. And Gondor will get so many power points here. Theoden is almost level two, level 3 already, I believe. Let me check. Almost level 3. Level 4 is the time for him to shine. 
Isengard needs half a power point for the freezing rain. On the other side, we have Ganjaman. He's a little bit away from getting the Elven Wood unlocked. I believe that's gonna be his goal. Because Gondor can always use the Elven Wood as well. I'm assuming Gondor player Dexter is starting to save for the Gandalf to ride. Two power points are needed for that after the heal. And uh, he will need a little bit more than 2000 resources since Gandalf costs you 6000. On the other side, Mordor has tainted land industry, Eye of Sauron. I believe, because of his money, that he's trying to save for the Witch King, which also means 50% more damage and armor. And also, Witch King is gonna give you the safetyness you need. Because the Gondor Knights, they, they can't do anything alone anymore, you know? They will always need the support from the Rohirrim Archers, otherwise, Witch King can't. I mean, you can't deal with Witch King with Gondor Knights all alone. You need either Gandalf or Rohirrim Archers support. Lurt is on the field. Isengard was getting some more units on the field. I don't like these combos at all. Like, they are extremely slow. And did you guys know, for example, that the Pikeman Crossbowman combo is way slower than the Urukai Crossbowman combo? I like to combine them with Uruks and Crossbowman instead and get like one or two Pikemen inside just to feel a bit safer. But they don't even need that because with the massive leadership they have, they can just face tank everything. If only Theodine around, you know? For now. Now is the counter-attack time. Rohan doesn't even have upgrades just yet, but that's gonna be changed very soon. Heavy armor upgrade is incoming. One Lumberman worker is scouting this area. That's a very nice sneaky move. Same also here. That already shows you guys that the players are on a really high skill level. And Nazarova, Nazarova is doing a phen phenomenal job scouting the area, knowing what's going on in the enemy base. And that might be a base trait. Mordor is only a couple of trolls. I don't know if this is gonna be enough to save the day. But you can see the damage, right? With Theodem being around, they are dying extremely fast. Demolish in time, he doesn't demolish in time, you're gonna get experience. If they're gonna get experience, Glorious Charge might be unlocked. And this actually shouldn't be ignored, you know? He has multiple Drama Trolls, but Drama Trolls are sporters, not fighters. And you see the Trolls, even with Drama Troll being around, are getting literally one-shotted. He needs assistance from his ally. Double industry now, you see. Also, Morda was using industry on his allies' base. But I believe this base from Rohan is gonna be just given up. Looks like they won't even try to defend this. And Morda might be able to defend himself, actually. The base is gonna fall apart in a couple of seconds. Looks like Rohan wanna actually buy the castle or the camp in the middle of the map to not get defeated. Because if he loses that and the camp is not under his control, he will be automatically defeated. Regardless how much money he has, regardless how many units he has. That's how Battle for Middle of One works. And yeah, I mean that hurts. Like replacing this castle with a camp is always a bad idea. But I believe they kinda they kinda expected it. They knew that they can't contest. Because again, this army with Drama Troll leadership and with Lourdes being around, Lourdes can cripple down Theodin, Theodin won't be able to move. And he's gonna get one-shotted until he's level 4. He's very squishy. And now all the Isengard team really need to do is walk into the middle and take down the last. But here's Gandalf on the field. Now they can actually go for a small attack. Uh, you need to be a bit smart about this choice. You need to actually get Theodin into the range and kind of use him as a beat. So Lourdes is gonna waste his cripple on Theodin. And then Gandalf can commit potentially with a huge Buzza Blast land combination but he has freezing rain now so ganjaman has elvin wood dex has also elvin wood they have double land advantage that means gondor is gonna use it first for example then mordor is gonna potentially cover this land but then rohan will also use his own elvin wood and remember isengard went for the freezing rain he has no tainted land yet so they will be definitely double landing this if they want to have a chance to win gandalf is in a safe spot land will be used just get inside ASAP. And Gandalf is coming in clutch now. Gandalf is coming in clutch now. Gandalf is coming in clutch now. Boo! Yeah! From level 5 to level 7. And Glorious Charge is also available. It's gonna be used now for... No! He's dying mid-animation. Gandalf did a phenomenal job. Lourdes has been taken down. But unfortunately, Rohan lost his theory before he could use the Glorious Charge. Now... They have so much leadership too with Statue and Well. And that's the Elven power. Elven Wood power. Elven Wood works like the freezing rain. It nullifies all the leadership bonuses as long as you are on the enemy land. And now comes the counter attack. And Isengard was not even debuying any army. He has to revive his Lord's ASAP. Lord's is only level 1. 
That's why it's so important to keep getting more and more units on the field all the time. He was actually getting some more pikemen for his ally, I believe. But he has nothing inside the base to defend himself. That's why you should not commit in a situation like that. Try to disengage as soon as you possibly can. And Gandalf, of course, as always, is the one who is saving Middle Earth. He's level 8 already, and remember, level 10 is gonna unlock his board of power, Nostacrest, to actually one shot the entire enemy army in a single second. Do they have, yeah, they have armor and leadership, of course, they won't get one shotted. Gandalf has to be careful, Lourdes is gonna be there in no time. I mean, Lourdes has crippled, he's an anti hero at the end of the day. He will be crippling you down, and booyah. You can't move for like 30 seconds, which is more than enough time for the one combat battalion to actually burst you down from 100 to 0. He has no Warchan yet, he has to play. He also lost the Uruk Pit, which means no more units any soon. Lourdes is on the field now. Gandalf will get crippled down. Yes, Gandalf is getting crippled down. You don't see the animation, but he can't move, but Eagle Summon will be used now. I don't think that <laughs> Morda Isengard team can defend this. Kill Lourdes, kill the combos, kill the trolls right after. Lourdes is gonna get literally one-shotted. Not many archers remaining, no production building, no more units, no Saruman, no Lourdes, no combos, no problem for the Gondor Rohan team. What a great comeback actually, they lost the beast. And yet they were able to defend the middle camp, which was the only reason why Rohan wasn't defeated yet. Gandalf is coming in clutch, knocking down these trolls. Gandalf is like a boss now, has the shield bubble to absorb damage, it blocks almost every every damage, it's like a huge damage reduction, doesn't block every damage, I mean something like a fire whip from uh, Balrog for example can still hurt him big time, glorious charge for death and glory, Gonda calls for it and Rohan will answer, oh my goodness they are shining bright like a diamond, that's a suffer game, the fortress, the Tita is falling down, it means no more loot, any so no heroes, Isengard has money but can't even use it. You can't build anything, you can't buy anything until your fortress or your city is back up. Just go back, heal up. In the worst case scenario, they have also trebuchets now with firestone upgrade incoming. Which means even if he, if they would not be able to defend, uh, if, even if they won't be able to defeat Isengard with this attack, uh, they will be easily able to defend themselves with the mighty trebuchets. Remember trebuchets, they don't care about leadership, they will just hit like an absolute truck and take you down regardless. This is no Orkhorn. <laughs> there we go, Galadrim Warriors slash Elven Warriors are here now. Put Theoding next to them to make them deal a bit more damage. And this, oh, he was also, oh my goodness, it's so unlucky. He was even able to kill the Tita. Oh, oh, oh. oh my goodness, but he has no, <laughs> that was really close. Like, don't play with the fire. Does he actually have Wizard Blast? Yeah, he has heal, he's beating. Like, he knows he has heal from the spell book. He's in a safe spot. And what a great game. I mean, a couple of mistakes from the Moda Isengard team. I believe they were kind of too fast, you know, when you defeated the entire castle. I believe you need to play a bit smart. And you need to expect it, that they might have, like, lands, you know. And these lands are gonna mess you up big time. That means you need to either split your army or just play it a bit smart. But I think they just rushed too much. And uh, it was just a little bit too much of a, of a commitment, which was definitely backfiring. The pikes are trying to go, oh, that's the Witch King, but what can Witch King do against such a reckless seed? I mean, nah, absolutely nothing, like the, look, the Rohirrim Archer level 10 can actually kill this Witch King in no time. Watch this now, please, watch this damage once they are able to shoot, you see? That's even, with only Theodin leadership and Glorious Charge, imagine them having like a Eowyn around, which can always use the smite and deal like 50% of your HP with like one single attack. Or imagine them having Eomi leadership around for 60% more damage. But you know what? That's all not needed. I like this gameplay a lot. And yeah, not wasting time with Eomi, getting those Rohira matches on the field, just to be able to support the Gondor player a bit earlier. Because once again, speed is the key to victory in this matchup. You need to try to win against Mordor Isengard as soon as you possibly can. You don't want to give, the, give them the chance to you know, gets a huge army with Lourdes leadership, with Saruman later on, then with like potentially trolls early on, but Mordo can always go for the catapults, you know, later on as well. Elven allies. I mean, he needs to be careful though, because Easter Eli can also hurt him big time. What a suffer game. <laughs> Look, the Gondonites are brave. 
<laughs> they don't even hurt him. This troll is like... Someone is trying to hit me. <laughs> you can always eat a orc to heal up. Oh, Witch King is screaming. He has not the Easter line just yet. He's committing a little bit too much in my opinion. He's trying to kill the catapults of course. Has also splash damage means he's able to hit multiple units or buildings at the same time when they are being next to each other. Troll is... <laughs> no damage from the Gondonites. I mean, trolls are tanky, you know? They are only vulnerable against magic or against uh, archers with fire. You, you see them tanking? They have also right now 100% armor, that's why. They have double armor, double damage. But Gandalf also doesn't care. Rank 9. Witch King. Oh, he's gonna be able to survive with like 1 HP left. Gonda is 6 power points only away from the army of the dead special summon. But trust me, this is not gonna be needed because there is nothing to kill beside buildings. I... Oh, Witch King has to commit. Witch King is gonna get blown up. And the game is gonna be over. And of course, just like in the films, ladies and gentlemen, the good is are gonna rule Middle Earth. Gondorohan are victorious. Nazorova will be leaving the game as he has been defeated. Kebab knows he can't turn this game around. And Dexter and Ganjaman, Gondor and Rohan are victorious. Thank you guys so much for watching. If this was, you know, enjoyable for you, please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time. Let me also know in the comment section down below if you want to see more BFM1 videos in the future. Take care of yourselves. As always, keep hitting like a track and stay beyond standards. Peace out.